Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Collar DM, the channel dedicated to breaking down barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. My name is Howard as always, and today we're going to be taking a look at Fantasy Grounds and Fantasy Grounds Unity and putting that up against Roll20 to see which is going to be best for our online campaigns. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's compare these two different online platforms. Now, the interfaces of both of the platforms are fairly similar with different artistic styles, but very similar kind of intuitive different menus. So I'm gonna leave some clips during the course of this video so that way you can figure out which one's more visually appealing to you. Now, both of them do offer different tiers of the product itself at different price points. So we're gonna kind of compare the products, um, kind of oranges to apples at the same price point as the best way I can describe it, just cause they also do offer very different things compared to each other. So it's something to keep in mind as we're going through this video. And we're gonna kind of use that information to decide which is gonna be best for our games, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, or any other tabletop role-playing game that you like to play. During the course of this video, if you have any questions about anything about Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or even Dungeons & Dragons, because that's kind of the game that I specialize in, make sure you leave a comment down here in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer any of those questions. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for the channel, because there's a pretty good chance I'm going to cover some of the content of your questions in a future video. All right, so let's talk about what you get with free access to these platforms. Now, with Roll20, you're actually gonna get access to their online tabletop simulator, which is really good because all of the stuff in this interface is gonna be web-based, so you don't have to download any additional software, which is really good. You're also gonna get 100 megabytes of upload storage for any maps or tokens that you might own or have already purchased. And if you buy any of the rule books or adventures through the Roll20 Marketplace, you're gonna be able to share them in a game up to five players, which is really good, because then you and your friends don't all need to rebuy these books, which unfortunately you will have to do if you plan on using them in that interface and dragging all that information in. Unfortunately, there is no way to take your hardcover books and actually find a way to import them in. You just have to buy them again. So something to keep in mind, if you're planning on playing online for a while, maybe it's worth that investment. If not, then maybe you just keep those books next to you as you're playing, up to you. Now, if you're gonna play Dungeons and Dragons, you're actually gonna have access to the fifth edition standard rules document for you and your players. And you're also gonna have access to a character sheet that Roll20 has already populated and filled out that's actually fillable within the interface that actually will also automate your dice rolls, which is really good as well. Because it's just gonna make that transition from the tabletop to the online platform a lot easier. There won't be a whole lot of coding for you to do it's already done for you which is really good and it's a good interface if you want to just get started playing your game in an online format now in fantasy grounds classic and fantasy grounds unity free access is going to actually give you the ability to play in a game hosted by an ultimate member which for them is going to cost them money so something to keep in mind you're also going to have access to the second through fifth edition rule sets for dungeons and dragons you're also going to have access to the pathfinder first and second edition starfinder rpg and the numenaria rule sets as well so that's kind of good and which Rule 20 also has, but just something to keep in mind that these different kinds of games can be played on both platforms. But other than that, the free version is really just a demo for you to kind of play around with the interface and just kind of see what it's like. And it doesn't really give you all that much. If you're looking to get into online play for free, then Fantasy Grounds probably isn't gonna be your option unless you have a friend that has an ultimate account, which is probably not very likely. Now, one thing to also keep in mind, even at the free level, if you have different assets like, uh, like tokens or maps or anything like that, both Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds have the ability to upload these assets into your game, which is really good because it'll allow you to not have to buy tokens if you already have different like little icons that you, maybe you made some character art for your character at your home game and you wanna port that in. You have the ability to do that. All right, so let's talk about the first tier of paid play with these two different platforms. Now, both platforms do have a subscription-based model and Fantasy Grounds Classic and Unity actually have a one-time purchase option if that's something that you're interested in. Now, with a Roll20 Plus subscription, you're actually gonna get three gigabytes of upload storage, which is more than the free version. You're also gonna get no load screen ads, you're also gonna get dynamic lighting for your games, and you're gonna be able to share some of your paid stuff from the marketplace that you have with three campaigns up to 10 players. So again, an improvement off of the base free account. You're also gonna get unlimited listings in the looking for group forum, and all these different assets are basically gonna put you back $49.99 a year or 50 bucks, which you know is probably worth it for you. If you're deciding that you're gonna to wanna to put some money down, you're gonna have put down some money, you're gonna need more storage, you're gonna have more games to play, makes sense. Now this first tier of paid play is actually where Fantasy Grounds and Fantasy Grounds Unity are actually gonna come forward with all their bells and whistles. So with Fantasy Grounds Classic, a standard license, which is what the first tier is called, is gonna give you the ability to build your own campaigns. You're also gonna be able to play in campaigns with standard and other ultimate users, and you're gonna have access to 242 creature tokens, 26 different battle maps, 
and all the rule sets from the demo version, plus the data libraries from all those rule sets as well. With Fantasy Grounds Unity on top of this license of a standard license, you're also gonna get everything I just said, plus 26 full color commission portraits, in addition to 960 tile, terrain, floor, and other different markers for your games, which is basically gonna allow you to build maps in the software itself as opposed to having to bring in all your maps. So with Classic and Unity, you're gonna get all these other different bells and whistles, like all these tokens, which normally you would have to pay for under normal circumstances, which kind of makes sense because you are paying now for this software and you're paying for this membership. So you're gonna get some of these assets now. Both Classic and Unity standard licenses are also gonna put you back $39 for a one-time fee or divide that by 12 and that's what you pay for a subscription every single month, but you pay that in perpetuity. So something to keep in mind. If you pay the one-time fee, you don't have to pay it ever again, which is really cool. But again, Classic and Unity are coming at you in the same price point. Unity is still in beta, but for the most part, it's ready and functional to go. So if, if I were you, I would probably go Unity for all those extra different assets. All right, so that was tier one. Not a whole lot, but you are gonna get some stuff and Roll20 Roll and Fantasy Grounds have some legitimate options there for tier one. Now let's talk about tier two or the highest tier, basically the best paid options that you can have for both of these different platforms. Now, for a $99.99 a year pro subscription, 100 bucks pro subscription with Roll20, you're gonna get six gigs of hard drive, uh, six gigabytes of upload space as opposed to three. You're also gonna get everything that we got in the Plus subscription, plus you're gonna get access to the Roll20 testing server. You're also gonna get the ability to make your own custom character sheets in the platform, as opposed to having to use what they already have. And you're gonna have a compendium sharing, uh, which is basically your Roll20 marketplace assets in five games up to 15 players, and the ability to get your game listings highlighted as part of the looking for group page. So with this pro membership, you're gonna double your storage basically, and you're gonna have better access to share your stuff you're going to get a couple other things, um, but that's basically all you're going to get for double the price. I mean, you're basically paying more for that upload space, which kind of makes sense. If you're going to be playing on a pro subscription, you're going to need all that upload space you can get. Makes sense. Now, with Fantasy Grounds Classic and Fantasy Grounds Unity, you're going to have access to what's called an ultimate account. And basically what this means is that you're going to get everything that you got in the standard account, plus the ability to host games for demo players, which means if you're the DM of your playing group, you're the only one that needs an account and you can share all of your assets to your players. Your players don't have to pay anything unless you guys all wanna chip in for this one account, which I would recommend if you guys are planning on playing with each other for a very long time. But if it's you by yourself, you can post games for anyone, which is amazing. And then not only that, you can share all the assets that you purchased in the Fantasy Grounds Marketplace, which we'll talk about in a little bit, with all these demo players. So they'll have access to, say if they take a character race from Volo's Guide to Monsters, they'll have the ability to use it which is amazing, it's awesome. I can't, I can't speak more highly of this version of the software. Now, for both versions, Classic and Unity, it's gonna put you back $149 if you pay once. Now, you do have the option to pay subscription, which we have with the standard edition, but again, this model is contiguous, and it just, you don't, this money that you pay in the subscription doesn't then get applied to a full amount purchase, it just, you continue to pay this fee. So something to keep in mind as you're going, but again, $149 or 150 bucks basically to have access and share it with everybody and only have to pay it once if you plan on playing this game longer than a year, which I definitely am planning on it, is really amazing. All right, so now let's talk about the marketplace for both platforms as this is gonna be kind of important if you're looking to buy any of these books. Now, both Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds have marketplaces and they have bundles for the different kinds of books. So if you're a player and you wanna have Xanathar's and you wanna have the player's handbook, you have that ability to buy that bundle. If you are a dungeon master and you wanna buy all the rule books and all the adventures, you're gonna have that ability as well. Now, for the most part, they're very similarly priced, but what I've noticed with Fantasy Grounds is some of the newer uh, adventure books are generally cheaper on Fantasy Grounds Marketplace than they are on Roll20's Marketplace. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're a completionist and you're looking to buy every single book, Fantasy Realms might be your cheaper option because you pay the one-time fee for the ultimate account of 150, and then for the most part, your prices for your books are in the, around the realm of like 25 bucks a piece, which normally these things new are 50 bucks. So something to keep in mind, like Fantasy Realms might be the cheapest option for you for your game. All right, it's decision time. Which one of these platforms are we gonna pick for our game? Well, honestly, it depends on what you want for your online game. If you're just kind of looking to get online and play for free and you're kind of looking to take your home game, 
and bring it online as quick as possible, Roll20 is gonna be the way to go for you because you're gonna get the most out of that free subscription. However, if you're gonna to look to pay for any of these assets, my honest recommendation is actually to go with Fantasy Grounds. Because Fantasy Grounds with an ultimate subscription to either Unity or Classic, I would choose Unity just because you're gonna get more. It is still in beta, so there's still a little bit of bugs here and there. But honestly, a Fantasy Grounds Unity account that is an ultimate subscription is gonna give you the most bang for your buck. And in all honesty, the fact that you can share it with as many people as you want. Say if you have like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten campaigns that you're running and you have like, you know, 30, 40 different players or something like that, something crazy. Honestly, Fantasy Grounds is going to give you the most for your money. And, and the fact that you can share all of your assets that you purchase with all of your games and all of your friends, it kind of pushes it over the top for me compared to Roll20's limitation on how many players you can share with them. If you ask me, Fantasy Grounds is the way to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna cover our comparison of Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds Classic and Unity. Now, if you have any questions on either of these platforms or anything else Dungeons & Dragons, make sure you leave a comment down here in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer any of those questions that you might have. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that way you get notified when another video comes out that's probably gonna cover something that you're interested in. Also, if you made it to the end, hit that like button, and I hope you guys learned a little bit about these platforms and can make a really good informed decision on which one you should use when you go out to play your games online. Until next time, I'll see y'all soon.